Hello everyone and welcome to the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel. This is Dawn. I'm so glad you could join me. Today I have a really fun interactive card I want to share with you. I'm using the Lawn Fawn Tada Diorama Die Set. This set gives you everything you need to make a three-dimensional card. The best part about it is that it folds up flat to fit in a regular envelope. And then they have add-ons like the Tada Diorama Heart Window. They have other add-ons as well, like the Lawn Fawn Grassy Hillside Inserts. And then I'm going to pair it up with the All My Hearts stamp set. So let's get started. These are all the pieces I'll be using today, and I'll go over them as I use them. This is the insert that comes with the diorama set, but I'm going to uh, swap it out for the Grassy Hillside insert instead. The first thing I'm going to do is cut out my main pieces and you'll need two of these. I'm cutting them both from white cardstock right now, but later in the video I decided I wanted a blue front to my card. So this is the point where you need to decide how you want your card to look. So whatever color you want your frame to be, whether it's a solid color or a pattern paper, you have to decide this now unless you want to change it later like I did. Next, I'm going to die cut two of the side panels from white cardstock. You also have to decide if you want a solid color or pattern paper for the side panels. Again, I started with white cardstock, but then I decided to go with pattern paper. I left it in the video to show you how easy it is going to be to switch it up later on. Now, I'm going to make the opening of the card. This is the square opening that comes with the diorama set. You just place it in the middle of the main piece and that will give you your opening. However, I'm going to swap it out with the heart window add-on. I'm just going to center it onto one of the main pieces that has the notches on the sides and tape it in place so it doesn't move around. And then I'm going to run it through my die cut machine. And we're only going to do this to one of the main pieces. Then I'm going to die cut the grassy hillside inserts from some green cardstock. And then I'm going to cut out two of the bands from any kind of cardstock. I went with the white. Now I'm going to create my side panels. The first thing I want to show you is that there are two score lines in the side panels. I don't know if you can see them or not. We're not going to score them just yet. First, we have to create our slots to hold the inserts in. So what we're going to do is turn one of the side pieces around so that they're facing in opposite directions. And the two smallest sections are facing each other. So the two one inch sections are next to each other and then the two larger sections are on the outer edge. I'm going to take the slot creator die and I'm going to put it in the middle of the one and a half inch space with the little foot facing towards the largest section. Then I'll take the other slot creator die and do the same thing and face the foot towards the largest selection on that panel. And make sure the bottom of the die is even with the bottom of the paper so you know the slots will be the same height on both pieces of paper and then tape it them in place so they don't move around. Once I run them through my die cutting machine, I want to reinforce the score lines. I found by reinforcing the score lines, it made folding the side panels easier and they folded much more evenly. And that's important when building a three dimensional card, but you don't have to do this if you don't want to. I just found it easier. Once I do that, I'm going to fold all of the score lines. I'm folding the lines away from me on both of the side panels. You can use a bone folder to burnish them if you want to, but once I rescored them, they kind of folded really nice, so I didn't really need to burnish them. I'm going to add some score tape to the one inch panel. You can use a tape runner or liquid glue if you want to. I had score tape and it worked great. I just like to add a strong adhesive and I'm just going to set those aside for later. I'm going to create my background now. I decided I wanted to ink blend my sky. 
I'm using my, some Distress Oxide Tumble Glass. It's my favorite color to use to create a sky background. All I do is use my blending brush and I blend it on the cardstock. I make sure to rub some of the ink off on the scrap paper first to make sure I don't get a lot of harsh dark spots on it. You can make your sky as light or as dark as you want it. When I'm done, I'm going to use the little cloud dies to cut out some clouds for my sky. And then I'm just going to set them aside for later. Now let's start to assemble the card. I'm going to put my side panels on the ink blended background. First, I fold the side panels in half so the slots are facing down onto the ink blended background. And the folded part is facing the middle of the paper and the opening is all the way to the left edge. And there should be a small little border left on the top and the bottom. Then I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing for the other side panel. Make sure your slots are facing down on the cardstock and the folded edge is touching the other side panel in the middle of the paper and the opening is all the way to the right. I'm going to insert my grassy hill inserts into the slots. You need to fold the top and the bottom flaps so that they can fit through the openings. Once they're through the slot, I'm going to open the flaps back up so they don't slide out of the slots. I'm going to do this for both of the grassy hill inserts. What's awesome about these inserts is you can have the regular straight inserts. You can create grass or use the hillside die to create a snow scene, mountains, or even the ocean. So the possibilities on where you can take these sceneries are endless. Once they're in, it really brings this card to life. To finish off the scenery, I'm going to adhere the clouds in place with some liquid glue. And then I went ahead and I stamped the sentiment from the All My Heart stamp set with some black ink onto white cardstock. And then I kind of curved it a little bit. And I'm using the curved banner die from the Heart Window add-on die set. And I cut it out. Okay, here is where I decided I wanted some color for the front of my card. I went ahead and die cut the main panel from some blue card stock, and then I cut the heart out of the middle again. I also decided I wanted to use some pattern paper for the middle of my heart, but instead of ripping the whole card apart, I just cut out two rectangles and then I adhered them over the top of the side panels. It was really easy to do. And I liked it much better than the white I was originally going to use. Okay, now I need to attach my bands to hold the side panels in place. I fold the ends of each of the bands at the score lines. I put liquid glue on each of the flaps. You can use tape runner or score tape. It really doesn't matter as long as it's strong. It, uh, I found that the glue worked really good, but if it's not strong, then your card's going to fall apart because this is what's going to hold the two side panels in and that's going to do most of the movement. So just make sure it's a very strong adhesive. I line the bands up with the notch on the back side of the heart panel and then I do the same thing for the other side. Okay, now for the fun part. I'm going to attach the side panels to the card front by putting the side panel through the bands that we just attached on the back side of the heart. First, I slide one side in all the way, and it can be a little finicky. Just take your time doing this. You want it a little snug so that when you open and close it, it will stay open if you want to display it. Then I go on the other side and I slide the other side in. Once that's in, look at how cute it is. It opens up and it closes so nice and your card is pretty much put together. It doesn't take long at all to assemble this. I'm going to attach the sentiment onto the front of the card. I thought the curved banner would look nice. Then the only thing left is to color my little images in. I stamp my images with a Copic friendly ink and then I cut them out. 
I'm coloring my hearts in with R29 Lipstick Red and R24 Prawn. I'm not doing anything special for, uh, you know, my coloring. I'm just doing some quick Copic coloring because these images are just so small. For the mouse, I go around all the edge with some C3 Cool Gray. And then I color the rest of the mouse's body with some C1 Cool Gray. I colored his ears, nose, and belly with R11 Pale Cherry. I cut out two of the mouse so that I could stack one on top of the other just so that the image was really sturdy because I don't want it to bend at all when I adhere it inside the card. And all I do is put a little bit of glue on the bottom of the mouse only. You don't need any glue um, on the top part of the mouse. And then I adhere it inside on the back grass panel. Look at how stinking cute this is. And it opens and closes so nice. Ta-da, you have a three-dimensional card. Super quick and easy to make. Okay, we're almost finished. All I'm going to do is adhere my little hearts onto the front of the card for a little bit of accents. And then to finish off the card, I'm going to adhere it to a regular A2 size card base that I cut to 8.5 by 5.5 and, and I scored it at 4 and a quarter. And that's it. You now have a three-dimensional, super cute card. Anyone would love to get this interactive card. I just want to show you how easily it also flattens down to a normal sized A2 size card and it slides right into the envelope. I think this die set is amazing and I can't wait to make more cards with it. You're definitely not limited to what you can do with this die set. So use your imagination and have fun with it. And that's going to complete my card for today. I want to thank you for joining me on the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel. I would love for you to leave a comment below and let me know what you think of the card. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel and their other social media platforms so you don't miss out on any great inspirational videos. Also, check out their website for any new releases they might have. And as always, thank you for spending your time with me, and I hope you have yourself a wonderful day.